let me because when you're when you if you just include those categories it helps you with your outline basically the categories are just like an outline right does that make sense Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, after the uh, uh, midterm break, uh, in seven days after the midterm break, you wrote. Yeah, actually, okay, so some of you, I corrected your papers, and I did say you should get it back in two days, and I'm sorry, I apologize, because you're having your break. Um, so you don't have to get it back until, uh, I don't know, until the week after the break at some point. Um, anyway, I did want to say that, that I've lost track. So you all, this is your exam week before midterms, and then you have a week off again, right? Yeah, from day yes, to four. Yeah, OK. So, um, so you wouldn't have to hand it back in again until I don't know, the end of that week that you come back. Um, I mean, I'll give you a lot of time. And I do want you all to take some time off to, I don't know what you can do to get a little more sane because, <laughs> you know, sometimes people are better off working on something, but whatever it takes for you, um, I don't want you to have my paper hanging over your head. Um, so I'm not going to worry too much about deadlines. Um, hopefully the weekend after when you come back to classes would be when you could hand it in again, but you can always, always come to office hours, right? And that's where I can just specifically work with you. And, you know, what is your, your main comment? What is blah, blah. And after 20 minutes or so, it really gets a lot clearer, I think. So I would encourage you to come to office hours. Now, right now we gotta get started. How many of you do not have class, a class after this one? Um, raise your hand. Bristy. You do not have, everybody has a class, okay. Taslima, who else does not have a class after this class? Okay. Um, so I'm asking uh, you if we don't get finished with everyone, I would like to just stay after and let everyone make sure to get their six minutes and um, so if you will just stay, if you can stay and then ask the student a question. Um, I can't make you, <laughs> but I will. And Bristi, would you like to wait so that you could have people asking you questions or do you wanna go first? Yeah, Professor, can you hear me properly? Yes. 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 <laughs> okay, oh. it's raining here, so. Well, okay, it's a little rough. I guess I can't. I can't hear you, Breezy. We'll have uh, to. Yeah. Okay, so let's just wait till later on and see if. Yeah. It's... Okay, okay, thanks. The um, raining will be stopped. I can start. Okay. Um, Melanie, would you like to go next? Yeah, I can go next. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so I did my paper on the National Women's History Museum. And they are a nonprofit institution that supports the education of women, women's rights, and educating the world on women's history. And this organization is not only just for educational purposes, 
but it also is working towards um, equality for women and also building the feminist foundation through young men and boys. And they've been, they've been a foundation since 1996 and they were founded by Karen Stacer. And Karen was a daughter, a wife, a mother, and a psychologist. So she had plenty of real world experience when it came to women's issues. And along with her experience, actually in 1982, Karen's father-in-law um, asked her to name five famous women who were not famous because of their husbands, and she was unable to do so. And this actually made her very enraged and kind of insulted her. Um, and so she decided to perform 13 years of um, her own research regarding women's issues. And she actually realized that there's very, very little background and history behind the evolution of women and women's rights. Um, so she was, you know, very alarmed by this. Um, so she wrote a white paper to express her disappointment and she eventually gained congressional support and ended up um, being passed to make the National Women's History Museum. Um, and then the first project that Karen tackled was restoring the women's suffrage statue to the US Capitol. And she was successful in this restoration and the Capitol, or the statue was restored in the Capitol on Mother's Day in 1997. And from 1995 to around 2000, Karen was the president of the institution. And she took on really all of the roles like the accounting, the planning, organization, all of that. And she did all of this with no compensation. Um, and I think just the fact that she had worked for five years, just kind of dropped everything in her life with no pay for her services just shows us how passionate she is um, about restoring women's rights and equality and building um, the feminist the feminist foundation. And so just a little bit more background on the History Museum. Um, they're actually dedicated to, to telling the stories of all of the women who made women's history possible. Um, so currently they're called a museum without walls because they don't have a physical presence. They don't have a building that they work out of yet, um, but they are, so they just have a website and they are the country's largest cyber destination with more than a million annual visitors and more than 600,000 followers on all of their social media platforms. Um, so their website provides so like all kinds of information. You all should visit it. Um, it's the National Women's History Museum .com, I think. And they provide all kinds of information ranging from articles about racism. They have personal educators that you can actually talk to. And they provide you with um, its own library that contains like journals and biographies and autobiographies all about women's <coughs> history. Um, so also they provide online exhibitions for teachers and classes. So like our class could actually attend one and they just like each exhibition has a different topic and they just kind of talk about um, the questions regarding women's history and um, just really about what, what the topic is about and what woman uh, had an impact on that subject. And so also they take online field trips so they could go to um, like a place that was significant in women's history and you could view that through the video in the classroom that they provide for you, which I think is super cool. 
Um, so on October 18th, 2019, the institution announced that they're going to hopefully have a physical presence by August of 2022. So hopefully by next summer, they'll actually have a museum that you can go visit and talk to people about women's history. So, yeah, I all think right. that's all. Okay, well, that's, um, you could come up with some sort of thesis statement saying that something like the, the existence of the Women's History Museum should make all of us uh, oh, as aware as she became of how little we know about women or something like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so your thesis would be reading about this should, um, should repeat the same experience as the woman who, or as, as the woman who was originally motivated and for the same reason, <laughs> right? We just don't know. Um, so Melanie, if you wanted to find something that you think the students in this class would be interested in, that's what I'm thinking is that it shouldn't be really about America, American women, unless it has some tie to them, you know, working with South Asian women or something like that, I think. Um, just to try, I don't know, try to expand on women's history, but okay, we're gonna have to move on though. Um, all right, uh, who has not given? Let's see. Um, Trine, Tree? Good morning, Professor. Hello. Yes. Oh, um, do you so... have do you have a class after this or not? Did you say you didn't? Yeah, yeah, I have class after this. Yeah. Okay, so my go ahead. Econ, econ class. Okay. So yeah, can I have so go ahead. Yes. Um, so my paper on Vietnamese government policy to prevent domestic violence. And so let me talk uh, something from my background of this study. So domestic violence is not the new issue in Vietnam, but it remains alarming and serious. Um, this is due to the male or female and female inequality in terms of access to economic resources and involved in the social life. Um, women are the most vulnerable and affected in this regard. Um, generally, this issue has improved much more than for the case, but tend to mainly have from international donors and organizations such as uh, United Nations for um, carrying out the projects, something like this, in which promote women's rights in advance and development. Um, our national government also promotes women's rights by implementing the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of discrimination against women and the law on prevention and control of domestic violence in 2007. But the government of Vietnam has not signaled its intention to address this issue in a systematic manner. So I think the biggest evidence shows that according to Global Trainer Gap Report in 2014, has recognized that the process of this issue in Vietnam is too slow and the weak enforcement of the law from the government is considered as the result that, that um, limits opportunity for women. So in my liter literature review that I wrote about two thousand for a government to should to perform um, a improve the state to the, this issue by improvement of the level of education and legal documents enforcement of alcohol abuse because they are two great contributing factors to um, domestic violence are said to be economic hardship and alcohol abuse so um many studies show that women experiencing violence um always associated with lack of education and in fact, women have less and more difficult access to education than men because what? in the society. Can you ask somebody not to do whatever they're doing? They're so noisy. <laughs> What's going on? 
Um, yes, um, because my house is near um, the road show. Yeah. So maybe drop is. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, should I continue, Professor? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm just going uh, to explain why we need to improve education because um, in Vietnamese situation, women, um, because uh, in the view of society, women's rights are limited and women who cannot go to school will not free themselves from this ideology, you know. And the dilemma here is that women voluntarily submit themselves without fighting for their freedom. That's the biggest problem. And moreover, the, the limited access to education will lead to limited employment opportunity. And since then, they are not independent and um, economically independent. So they are dependent on their husband and families. So for the um, second reason about uh, legal documents in form of alcohol was a bill because although the state has promulgated a law banning the, the abuse alcohol to commit illegal acts, but there's still no plea and severe uh, punishment because a woman's dependence on the family needs to be dominated by her husband. And even when women who experience violence go to the police and legal agency to deal with it, so most agencies do not show it thoroughly, um, thoroughly or forcefully, but only consider this is a violence as a private manner um, in the family. So this makes women frustrated when many accusations are not resolved and on the contrary, um, on the contrary, this is a more attractive for her husband. So as a result, they should be more serial abuse. So that okay. I want to say about my, my paper. Okay, very good. Thank you. So I, I just got, I just read it recently. So I think it's good because she focuses specifically on domestic abuse. And then she says, the evidence from elsewhere indicates that if you educate women so that they become economically independent, the evidence suggests that they will then leave their husbands, not allow themselves to get abused. They can demand that husbands not abuse them, but you have to have, you know, you, also, the, you have to have laws and then you have to have enforcement. But the research indicates education and then economic opportunity is the best way and enforcement yeah. of the laws is the best way right is that fair yes okay but actually professor you know that my um country social is like socialism and it's for conflicts in society you know, a little bit in from for decades it's so it's same hard for me. Uh, totally relieves a liberal ourselves from society <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was fascinating. I liked reading it. I wish we had time to talk about it. I'm so sorry. Um, Fatima, you, for listening. of course. Fatima, what have you got? Yes, Professor. Um, I'm going to have to present my one. Go ahead. I've got you got six minutes. Okay, Professor. My uh, my topic is gender equality of education in Bangladesh. Uh, so my main claim of the research paper is that uh, men and women will get equal education and there will be no difference because education can never be developed in the country without gender equality. So the right uh, to education would be equal for men and women. Therefore, uh, both men and women will be able to find employment of any kind and extend in their lives. Uh, in this significant of a study, the significance of the research paper is that the study set light on the gender equality of education in developing countries. Women empowerment and uh, women's education is a fundamental right in the constitution of Bangladesh, but women are not getting that way. They need to be as strong as men. Uh, thus, it will be an adversary to avoid the lack of illiteracy. 
uh, given the lack of empowerment of education, the government need to think deeply about giving equal rights. So continuous research should play an effective role in establishing gender equal um, yeah, gender equalities uh, in education. Uh, so, uh, in my methodology, uh, the paper is based on secondary information and it is qualitative analysis that includes non-numerical important information in this issue. And uh, in data collection, I have used uh, research net uh, for academic research uh, because it is very relevant to find accessible information because the research is based on gender equality of education in Bangladesh. And also the paper has used journal article and news paper because it is worthy of relevant analysis at the right point. Uh, moreover, uh, some words are easy to use and are used to gather information such as education, child marriage, education system in Bangladesh. Um, gender, uh, in my liter literature review, uh, I have uh, present uh, a history of uh, of a mother who is Begum Rukia Shakwat Hussein, behind the contribution of education of Bengali, who is Rukia philosophy of education uh, was based on her own life experience. She has an idealist in her approach. She uh, she she is witness how the how the women of the Bengali Muslim community suffered due to age religious norms and patriarchal uh, new uh, new means. Uh, to drive away their mystery, she left and needed education. Yes, ma'am, that's it. Okay. Um, all right. So what would you say your thesis is that um, prioritizing women's education is, um, is, a major, is a major factor in the development of Bangladesh? Or do you want to say um, if women's education has been understood in Bangladesh as a major factor, uh, the government needs to pay attention to the education of the Rohingya Muslims, right? Yes, Professor. Okay. Is your, is your research related to the fact that the Rohingya are not getting educated? Is professor, yeah, it's related. Okay, well then that should, does that make sense that that would be your thesis? Uh, that Bangladesh has promoted women's education before, but they're, they're not paying attention to the Rohingya. Does that make sense? Okay. I guess I love right? I mean, it was before 2016, they valued education for women. The yeah, Rohingya, yeah. yeah, okay, the Rohingya came, they aren't following through on that. So that would be- yes, Sir, I have a question regarding this. Rohingya, is, Rohingyas are not in our country's people. Like they are from another country like Myanmar and uh, they are refusing so uh, i think it is quite difficult for our government to like uh, control all over the rohingya and provide uh, like uh, education for uh, like uh, maybe uh, how many i don't know <laughs> this uh, this must rohingyas people so okay uh, as it is a developing country and it is quite uh, like uh, like uh, difficult for our government. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, I don't want to get into a political argument here, but um, so uh, Fatima's thesis would just be whatever it would be. And then, you know, people who are reading it would say, well, then there's this other side of the, of the issue and we could go on and on, but that's okay. These are short research papers. Um, Roshani, what do you think? Uh, what did you write about? Yes, Professor. So um, my thesis, uh, my 
paper is about women's education and scope of governmental approach in Nepal, like governmental approach of women education in Nepal. So, um, Professor, I was about to, uh, I was trying to share the slides with you. So, uh, can I go next after one performance uh, so that I can present it with the slides? Sure. Um, Fayaza. Okay, thank you. Yes, Professor. Do you want to go? You haven't gone yet, have you? No, Professor, I have the class at uh, 11, 1.30, so I have a time. No problem. She can go. Oh, so yes, you don't have a, you can. Yeah, I have a time. Sorry. You have a class after this class. Yes, at one one thirty, professor. Okay, so go ahead. Okay. No, wait. What time does this class end in your time? Uh, it's uh, around nine thirty, so I have the uh, more than three hours, professor. Okay, so, so can you wait till yeah, later? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, Rahima. Oh, you've already yes, presented. You already presented. Um, Rafa. Yes, ma'am. You ready? Okay. Uh, Habiba. Oh. Well, I'm trying to go through them sort of in the order that they appear on my screen. Otherwise, I'm Professor Marjia is willing to present. So. I know it, but I'm just trying to go in the order. Okay. As, you know, I'm just trying to call people according to the order on my screen so we can have some kind of uh, order. But Rafa, are you there? Okay. Habiba. Yes, Professor, I'm here. Are you ready? Yes, Professor. Good morning, everyone. This is Habiba. Today I'm going to present Omen Educational Organization in Bangladesh. Uh, so the aim of my paper is to explore the present psychomastans of Bangladesh, uh, of uh, female education in Bangladesh. Uh, Omen, Omen educational system has started to work with the help of organization efforts. In Bangladesh, uh, the current state of female education around 71.95% uh, of women were educated uh, at the age of above 15 in 2019. Um, Bangladesh organization has made uh, impressive progress uh, to access education. When women are, when are educated, they are more likely to recognize uh, like the value of education, the value of education, and uh, respecting each other and uh, empowering, getting opportunity, and also ensure that uh, to educate their, their children as well. Then my thesis statement is that um, although the greatest challenges faced financially by women in a starting education, yet uh, education in Bangladesh has improved. Uh, it's women education system. Hello. Go ahead, Melanie. Okay. Hello. Go ahead. Okay. Oh. Here are some. Here are some of organizations that are strongly working for women education in Bangladesh rural areas, including like um, Brak and Asian University for Women. Then I describe based on my research on NGOs that. Oh, boy. I guess we lost her. Um, Okay. Mark. Professor? Yeah. Okay. The paper is based on secondary research, which is uh, quali qualitative and analyzed that I collected information to inform my research. Uh, for the data collection, uh, the most I use my research uh, from Google Scholar and, and uh, other website, which is credible source that I took, uh, uh, that I like um, articles, PDF and journal articles. 
and other eligible sources where I use and demos and relatable uh, for argument and, and information. And data analysis has been conducted successfully depending on the topic and the more uh, that Omen Educational Organization has developed the, the Omen Education System by the policy of uh, national organization. Then the limitation of the study covered the research, but it was a little bit uh, complicated to, con uh, to conduct it. In my literature review, Bangladesh, uh, but Bangladesh uh, still has the lowest education system uh, as a student cannot study in for financial issue due to the low income, like uh, highest, uh, tra highest transportation uh, costs, and they, they are also not getting, uh, and they are also not getting at all NGO support. Then finally, according to my overview, uh, the Omen Educational Organization has shown that Omen are uh, empowering in, in different way with educational organization support in Bangladesh rural area. Thank you, sir. That's it. That's it. Okay. Just a sec. You said that they're not getting NGO support, but yeah. Brock is the biggest NGO in the world, and Brock has definitely supported women's education in Bangladesh. You know. Yes, Professor. So, were you just thinking of NGOs outside of Bangladesh don't support? Not only Bangladesh, who are supporting like oh men like a UW and uh, they are making empower also brag they are also supporting around the world and they are giving opportunity especially to women right and so when you said they have no NGO support did you mean like I in my I, I went against two topic like they are facing financial problems and like uh, high, uh, some of all the also some of women cannot study due to the higher cost, uh, transportation costs and like that's why uh, why are, uh, it's difficult to get NGO support because they, are, they do not care at all how they can care at all the all women. Okay. Um, okay. I I'm. Do you mean like Brock will go out into the villages? Yeah. Uh, women who want to come from the villages into yeah. the city. They, yeah. they don't yeah. get, okay, okay. <laughs> you just have to get, yeah, a bigger picture of stuff. Um, all right, you, sure. Okay, Marzia, what would you like to say? Okay, now I lost her. Marzia? Professor? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you, uh, I didn't get him. Your turn. Okay, okay, Professor. Hello and good morning, everyone. This is Marzia Midi, and uh, today I wanna to talk about uh, a research on Asian University for Women, its role in educating women and its impact on women's life. Uh, as the background of study, uh, I want to say that Asian University for Women plays a very significant role in empowering women. Uh, AUW was established in 2008, and since 2008, uh, AUW works as an educational, in, educational institution and provide scholarship for women around the Asian countries. Uh, in most developing countries, uh, uh, the vast majority of women have no access to higher education for several reasons, uh, like poverty, like violence, uh, like some uh, beliefs about the value of women's education. So this all caused women to be deprived from their rights, which is education. And EUW uh, creates a dynamic and varied residential learning community where highly uh, where women from a variety of cultural and religious backgrounds can study and grow both academically and physically. Uh, the main claim of this uh, paper is that uh, for improving the leadership potential and empowering women, 
women should get education and uh, it helps to the development of uh, not only women's life uh, and women's independence, it also help, helps for the development of societies. And uh, AUW uh, as an educational organization uh, has a significant contribution on women's education as it provides uh, educational facilities for women. Uh, and the research method, I wanna say that this paper is based on secondary data, which is qualitative analysis uh, with some important numerical and, uh, 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 and which is uh, with some numerical and non-numerical data. Uh, the topic, uh, the topic is uh, I already told about the impacts of Asian University on women's education, uh, and also uh, the research method was to find articles about the impacts of education on women who came uh, at AUW from developing countries like Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Syria. So that, that about the data collection and research limitation, I, I want to say that uh, for data collection, uh, there are many websites, uh, but these people got uh, the data from Google Scholar and GSO because these websites were uh, free and also accessible. Uh, but also there were uh, some information about the AUW, which I took from AUW website, and also one article about AUW Korean, AUW in a colonial situation. Uh, and also, there were some limitations about this topic because uh, except AUW websites and some papers which AUW published, there is not any outsider uh, data about the AUW rules in any other websites. So uh, uh, the most uh, data that I collected the, was uh, AUW website and also uh, three other web, three other um, uh, source I have got, but this source are uh, about the importance of education on women's life and the and the impacts of uh, education on women's life in countries like Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, which are these countries are the countries that uh, uh, that bring students in Asian universities. So that's why I took uh, that sources. And also the keywords are uh, like education, the keywords on that source are education, development, empowerment of women, uh, which was, uh, 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 so, which was um, reliable and trusted for me to take sources from this, uh, to take information from these sources. Uh, and also to come up uh, with the literature review, uh, First of all, I want to say the importance of education, and I want to put uh, uh, I want to put from Drew Frost, which was former president of Harvard and first female president in the history of Harvard. Uh, she says that we educate women because it's it's not we educate women because it changes the world. Why I uh, I quoted this uh, because this is a women's quote and a woman who. Uh, uh, in a very a woman who got in a position uh, uh, at the in the history of a university for the very first time, and of, I think it's uh, it's the power of education that made her able to go and work uh, on that position. Uh, so the, about the importance of education, we all know that education is very important, and it is the key to create a liberated and invited world. And also, the more educated women that any society has, uh, that society is uh, that society is uh, will be uh, will have more improvement. So, uh, Asian University for Women was founded in two thousand eight to provide education and train future leaders. And since uh, the establishment of the university. In the Asian University, there are women from 12, uh, sorry, from 20 Asian countries that came here and get education. Uh, I want to say that what really makes uh, AUW distinguish from other universities is that Asian University for Women in Bangladesh provides full scholarship for women who do not have access to higher education in their countries. As we all know that, uh, uh, 
like the, in AUW. Okay, two more minutes. Okay. Uh, as we all know that in AUW, there are women from countries who are in conflict. So AUW has been to get education. Uh, and also, uh, one of the missions of Asian University for Women is, help, is to help girls and women who come from uh, who are a dark background, like financial background, war background, and unjust background. Uh, and also, AUW, since the establishment, trained about uh, 2,000 young women. 75% of these graduated women uh, return to their countries for making positive differences uh, in their countries and their communities and make their life uh, more better. And also 20% uh, have, 20% uh, of these women took admission to, uh, uh, to some uh, best universities of the world. Uh, in the conclusion, uh, I wanna say that Women's education is the most uh, women education is the most significant instrument for changing their social status. Uh, it is education it is educated women who play a very crucial role in the development of countries, uh, in the development of economy, and also they train healthy educated children. So women who have received an education are uh, more. Uh, uh, are uh, is stronger and more independent and re rely on their own life. So EUW, uh, which EUW in Bangladesh, which is one of the developing Asian countries, is supporting women's education to give uh, the society a, uh, to give the society is strong, is independent, skilled, and active, uh, and also okay. future women. So uh, just I'm really sorry. Just some seconds. And finally, uh, as a solution, I want to say that for more developments of the nations, national and international organizations should understand the importance and effects of education on women and promote more women all over the world to access education. Thank you so much. If okay. you have any questions, I'm here. We're, we're going to have to, um, I think we're doing pretty well. So if people want to write a question now, but let's just, I'm going to move on and then we could go back if we have time. Um, so, so, you know, everybody values women's education. So what I want you to do in your papers is pick something specific, right? That's not the generic, what is your research going to do, your paper going to, going to target something and provide you know, more evidence that this particular thing um, is a good thing. But anyway, uh, so that, actually we, we just, we'll just move on and I'll, I'll come back to you. We can come back later, but and I wasn't criticizing yours so much. It's just generally everybody you know, agrees women's education is good and then you have to figure out uh, how to target it. But Amina, go ahead. Yes, Professor. Hello, everyone. Uh, hope you are doing well. So, it's based on women's empowerment of education in developing countries. Uh, so, uh, because in developing countries, uh, like uh, women empowerment of education, which which in enable women to meet their challenges and addresses their traditional uh, thematic through and makes them independent. Uh, so, uh, in my paper, I wrote that the main claim is uh, education is not a, uh, education should not get a lack, oh, women sh should not get a lack of education opportunity, but it should be free and accessible for every woman, as education is considered as a key of women's empowerment, which makes them more powerful to face the challenges of life. Uh, so then I will provide, uh, I will write two paragraph, uh, I mean two literature review paragraph. So uh, based on one is um, making their own decision and to have their right. So then another one is a right to take responsibility of home and do job in the outside world. Whatever they want, uh, they, should, uh, they should have the right, uh, uh, they should have the right to take both. Whatever they want, they, they can take. 
I mean, my point was that. And also, uh, the significance of a study is uh, 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 focus on the empowerment of women in education in, 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 different, in developing countries. So women's empowerment of education uh, makes women a stronger in developing countries uh, to solve any problem which they are facing in their daily life, as they will have decision-making power whether they want to take authority of home and outside world or not, and access to higher education. And the paper is based on secondary research, which is a qualitative analysis and the topics of uh, women's empowerment of education itself has many developing points to collect the data and discuss. So uh, this is why uh, gathering information from secondary source is essential to make research less complex and uh, qualify quickly understandable. understandable. Uh, so for data collection, the most used and perfect website for academic research via Google Scholar that I, I easily use and also everyone is accessible of that. Uh, so in research limitation, uh, the subject has a lot of space of its own, which has made it a, a bit complicated to conduct the research. So uh, it could not possible to cover information from every country, every developing countries. So I just uh, I just took uh, Nepal and Bangladesh, um, two countries as an as an example of developing countries where women are facing uh, difficulties of empowerment, like they couldn't raise their voice and they couldn't tell, even they couldn't decide, they couldn't decide what they want. So in my conclusion, I just uh, summarize all all the things which I uh, which I discussed on the app. So now and also uh, in in conclusion, I just uh, I wrote that uh, women have access to higher education in developing country. Uh, they can success in in empowering women. So education is the key of empowering. So I just wrote that. Professor Amda. Okay. okay. Um, all right. So a lot of you have like in your literature review, you have three articles, right? And you sh all you need to say is a couple sentences. One of them is qualitative because it's based on interviews and those interviews had women saying that when they got educated, they became more powerful. The other ones are quantitative. And that says that 70% of women in your country are not educated. And those women uh, suffer from more poverty and abuse and 30%, you know. So I just want like, just say that article was quantitative and it showed this. And this one was qualitative and it showed this. And this one was both. And you just say, the reason I chose these articles is because they showed this pattern, blah, blah, right? So again, I'm not criticizing you, Amina, specifically. I'm, I'm pointing out that many of you said, hey, education is great, but it's very generic, right? And so your paper is, a, as far, you know, you want your paper to contribute to the knowledge, to the knowledge that we're accumulating because as Melanie said, we're literally creating a history. So what is it that, that people absolutely need your paper as a stepping stone to the next step, right? It's not just another paper that says, gee, women should get educated, right? So that's, that's all I'm getting at is that when you do research, you don't wanna just confirm what everybody knows. You wanna figure out how do we get there? Um, what does Brock do that's particularly helpful? Uh, what, how has Brock changed under COVID? So articles about how has COVID set back uh, girls and uh, child marriage is increasing and women are not going to get educated or something. Just, um, just this constant increasing the body of knowledge. Um, and again, that's nothing specific to any one student. 
I just want to give you this idea of, you know, the background would be, we've all, you know, there's multiple studies on education, but this particular issue came up. So that's why I'm going to do this paper on this particular, how has COVID affected it or something like that. Then, you know, the significance, it's very significant, even though it's hard to find articles at this point because it's so recent. And, and that's why you wouldn't necessarily pick that. But anyway, and then you just go on about your thesis. But all right, so Sauda, what have you got? Have you got something? Uh, hello, yes, Professor. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My research paper topic is the role of an organization in women's sexual harassment in Bangladesh. In today's modern world, sexual harassment of women has become a common occurrence. Sexual harassment is verbal or non-verbal, secret or physical insult to someone in publicly or privately. Uh, for example, making absence remarks about someone's clothing or, or body, looking at them with bad eyes, uh, telling insulting sexual, suggesting jokes, etc. Uh, over this time, uh, over over time, this harassment has increased. These sexual harassment activities are not limited to the street, but all, but are also taking place in various education inst institution and office. It is uh, having a negative impact on a uh, women's life. Although various national and international organizations like Biology and BRAC have still some leggings to give their services, they are playing an important role in women's sexual harassment. My main claim is uh, national and on, organi national organization Malozy and international organization BRAC are providing financial assistance to absurd women, encouraging women's education, raising public awareness, uh, breaking down on those who do this kind of things and contributing to the country's development by creating employment opportunities for uh, absurd women, abused women. The significance of this paper is that the study focuses on one of the most important women issue, which is sexual harassment. The topic is important in our society because the more people are aware of this, the sooner they will be aware of raising children, especially in the case of girls. Not only girls need to be educated, girls as well as boys need to be also educated. Uh, if not, it will have a negative impact on girls' life. For example, because of this, the parents of girls in Bangladesh may stop going to their educational institution. As a result, their education will come to an end. If the girls do not study, it means to the family that they can have a child marriage. According to Bragg survey, 94% women are victims of sexual harassment in public public transport. Wow. Uh, so Malazi and Brack are working to put an end to this. Uh, Malazi is col collaborating to help women raise the, their voice for their rights on the online platform and Brack by creating financial and employment opportunities. If they work in this way, one day women will be able to move their country forward on the path of development. Thank you. Okay, so that brings up, you know, another specific issue. And um, that's interesting because so much work has been done to enable girls and women, young women to go to school and yet they get harassed on the bus, they get harassed by teachers in the educational institutions and this will just lead to uh, a regress, people not wanting to take their, let their daughters go to school and then the daughters might not even want to 
and they can't get married once they've been seriously abused. Um, so, so that's an interesting take, right? That's a additional information. If you want them to be educated, which everybody does, you also have to worry about sexual abuse and harassment. You should have serious penalties for teachers who do it because that stops the whole movement toward women's education um, I, and serious training, you know, for teachers. Anyway, that's really helpful, Sada. Um, does everybody else understand what I mean by finding some other additional kind of piece of the pie that could help develop an overall view? Um, Taslima, I'm going to do Taslima and then we'll go back and, and go back to some of the others we skipped. Uh, Taslima, do you have Go ahead. Sir, can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me? Yep. Maybe. Uh, kind Hello, of. Hello, Professor. Okay. Are you talking, Taslima? Hello. Okay. Yes, Professor. Just start talking because I don't know if I can hear you if you don't talk. Hello, everyone. Yes. Hello, everyone. I am Taslima. Uh, my topic is gender equality in education. Uh, gender equality is about uh, equal right, responsibility, opportunity for all people, uh, like uh, men, uh, men and women should be treated equality, should be paid at the same for the same uh, job. Uh, also, gender equality is um, a protective from violence from, uh, against women and girls. And in NEMA, uh, gender equality uh, create a complex balance between our cultures and historical norms and contemporary outcome uh, because um, the in a spirit of high uh, high level of uh, high level of education for women, uh, inequality uh, remain high. Uh, also, tradition, uh, traditionally, most people consider that. Um, men are more capable uh, in business uh, and uh, than women and also uh, men should go uh, for higher education then uh, men are more important to go uh, university uh, uh, than uh, women um, in Additionally, in uh, 1868, uh, colonial rule uh, introduced the, uh, the scholar education system and women representation uh, in a school increased uh, uh, significant, uh, significantly between um, uh, 19, uh, 1910 and 1930. Uh, by the, uh, in the middle, in the in the middle of 20th century, uh, Myanmar uh, Myanmar was considered uh, one of the best education system in Southeast Asia. Um, since opening its border in 2010, uh, Myanmar has uh, recognized uh, recognized the high level of gender inequality. Um, however. Uh, modern modern theorists uh, believe that uh, social economic health improved the, the condition for democracy and self uh, determination and set the below for of support for uh, 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 circular and gender equality according to Ravika Sheep and uh, Asha Asha uh, Klimiti uh, astrologic both men uh, men and women have equal access to education and also various international efforts are now uh, being to promote uh, to understand the of uh, women rights
Okay, we lost you. Taslima. Oh dear, I don't know. Um, I guess we'll have to move on and we'll just come back to her. Um, okay. Um, so also keep in mind a question you might wanna ask someone, we might have time, it's really hard to know, but keep, keep in mind, write down what you would like to ask someone. Okay, Bristi. Yes, Professor. Is it clear now? Go ahead. Hello, Professor. Wait. Can you hear me? Uh, right my, now. My uh, main theme of the paper is gender equality and women in education uh, because women have to get equal right the same as the men get uh, not only uh, uh, like uh, not only the men who have to be educated but also women deserve a good education girl educa uh, women education uh, strength uh, economics and reduce uh, inequality that give uh, a more stable person support a strong uh, community uh, communities basically power uh, really uh, relation discrimination and equality uh, equality is a Granted to education, which can use as a tool to create a predestined that lead to discrimination. Therefore, uh, women should get education right. Um, my then um, also uh, gender. Especially the right of women education in Myanmar, the, the over the overarching goals of uh, gender equality is a society uh, to ensure equal opportunity for all for all women and men that enjoy right and responsibility in all walks of life. However, men don't get the thing that they deserve to achieve like men in Myanmar, and. Yeah, the, my paper is um, a secondary research a quality analysis method that include uh, numerical measures uh, data on uh, on the, on this uh, subject. Um, data call, uh, I collected my, my data from Google Scholar and Google Scholar because uh, they uh, they are uh, also. Um, Easily available, all of the information that I that I wanted. Um, yeah, I use my uh, all sources uh, from uh, 2032 to uh, 2021. Then I use I use uh, one example of uh, one of uh, our uh, uh, Burmese activists uh, whose name is Wewenu and. Yeah, she uh, she she is a uh, she is a Burmese activist and a advocate for the right and equal for all people in Bur in Myanmar, including the Rohingya who uh, the Rohingya. Um, yeah, she she uh, she work she is, uh, she work. Um, for democracy and human rights, especially for uh, marginalized, marginalized women, her, uh, ethnic uh, Rohingya, through the uh, Women Peace Network, who, uh, we will know uh, she worked to build uh, to build uh, a peace and mutual understanding among the group. Then, yeah, she uh, in 2000 in 2014 she found the Women Network for Justice. Uh, 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 a woman uh, at at uh, at network that proved uh, legal and educational support for women in Myanmar. Additionally, she is a passion about uh, educating women to have a better life, and she is the one who um, uh, uh, aspiring and making women feel stronger, uh, interesting to be educators, so that they can have a better future today. Um, many women, uh, many women. Go. One minute. One minute. 
many women in my society are studying and achieving their goal because of hard support and uh, uh, motivation in my conclusion um, in my conclusion uh, i want to tell uh, the cause of gender in, in uh, gender inequality in myanmar because of there are still many cultural practices and traditional practices and religions history this concept keep women away from freedom in this case uh, I want to I want to discuss that they have the right to work and the right uh, in okay. various kind of uh, sector uh, contribute freely in any field. Uh, yes. I, as I give example, we know is a example woman who fight the who who uh, who can fight the, for their boys even she was a once a prisoner. Okay, we some... have to we have to stop Taslima. Really, we've got a lot more. We've only got half an hour. We have a number of students. So that was fine. It was good. And I'm glad, you know, that people are active. Yeah. Okay. Bristi, go ahead. Okay, Professor. Okay. So, uh, hello. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I have chosen an uh, organization to research on it uh, named Bangladesh National Women Lawyers Association, in short, uh, BNWLA. Uh, its main goal is to bring changes in the society by providing the women their fundamental rights and opportunities equally as men. So my thesis is uh, for the women, this institution is very useful because its functions included uh, providing equal rights and opportunities to women, uh, defending all kinds of violence against women, uh, establishing rules of law for gender equality and also uh, ensuring the women uh, lawyers of Bangladesh to increase the scope of profession in the society and countrywide. Uh, this organization is fully devoted to women uh, for their well-being uh, with the elimination of all forms of violence against women. It's uh, reducing gender-based violence. It depends uh, sorry, it, it defends a woman's rights and support professional development to improve women's status. Additionally, BNWLA provides a platform for legal services to prevent gender discrimination. Uh, in this process, uh, this organization increased the capacity of selected uh, tertiary educational institutions on the and the students' communities through which uh, they've developed their inner strategy to engage in taking action to address and prevent sexual harassment and other forms of gender violence. As students are contributed in this institution to fight for the women's rights, uh, there is no doubt that it can't achieve its goal to the women's well-being. And uh, surprisingly, uh, this institution institution is crossing uh, 42 years of its existence with the involvement of 64 legal centers at uh, 60 upazila and 64 unions, including hilly and rural areas with women lawyers. Uh, and it's a qualitative research paper based on uh, secondary source uh, like Google Scholar and Science Direct uh, and 10 uh, for online. I have taken the, that uh, information from these sources. And also, it has uh, so many groups to work on gender equality, uh, stop child marriages, defend violence against women, and other related issues of women. And the groups are Parivarik Nirjatan Pratirud Dal, Nari Nirjatan Pratirud Dal, and Student Action Group, uh, Cultural Groups, uh, Study Groups, Adolescents, uh, committee, village development committee, and vigilance team. So I am sure that uh, by the help of this organization, women can bring a huge uh, change in the in their status in the society and of course uh, legally, and they will be able to reinstate themselves with a new and developed thinking in their society, including enough respect and uh, as a woman. Okay. Yeah, that's all. Thanks for listening. Okay, good. Um, yeah, okay, so this is a, another piece of the pie, right? And then again, you could, what I want to focus on is like the 64 organizations, 
the number of uh, cases they brought, you know, just um, this evidence, the development of the organization, they started out doing it this way and now they do it that way, or just things that show that there's this history that's actually boots on the ground developing. Um, and that's the difference between the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. I mean, anybody can say, I have a right, I have a right, you know, but if, if nothing's happening on the ground, it doesn't matter. So that's why we have the capabilities model. Okay, are women actually capable of doing this, right? Women have a right to ed education. Yeah. Well, yeah, except that who gives them the actual ability to actually get educated? That's where you need, that's why you keep needing all this research because it has, it explains how the boots on the ground are women actually able to make good and, and achieve those things. So that's, that's why the UN actually focuses on the capabilities are they do, rather than this abstract language of rights. But anyway, again, that's, I'm not criticizing anybody. I'm just, pointing this out because I think now that you listen to all these papers, you can tell, I think you can figure out what I'm saying, right? And then Breesties has a particular, you know, she had some number crunching there and that's good because <laughs> it gives you this picture of what's going on. Um, so we have, um, let's see, Roshani, you were gonna, did you wanna present? Yes, Professor. Okay, go ahead. Um, okay, so uh, Kasturi is presenting my slides on BBFAP, so I'll be presenting from the side. Slides, uh, I'm, I'll make sure to make it short. Uh, so Kasturi, are you there? Yes, can you see the slides now? Oh, yep. Yeah, um, okay, go ahead. Okay, so my um, my paper is on uh, is about women's education and the scope of governmental approach in uh, Nepal. So um, so I will be discussing what is the roles of government and uh, how uh, roles of government in enhancing women's education in Nepal. So my content will be background study, main claim, objectives, methodology, uh, and uh, I'll be discussing about the uh, responses from literature and confusion. Okay, so in the background, um, what I have is like uh, the literacy rate of women is uh, very low compared to men, which is 48 percentage, uh, which is 48 percentage. And uh, mm, there are various factors affecting the women's literacy rate, uh, that is uh, existing social practices like child marriage, child labor, dowry, uh, where uh, people think that women's education is not much important as dowry. So women's education are always uh, lagging behind. So, um, so in order to uh, help this, in order to uh, maintain a good education system, many of the NGOs and uh, many of the government, uh, governmental bodies have made an effort. Many of the policies has been learned, launched, but we will find out like if uh, the activities are actually working or not, or uh, we uh, or not, and we'll also uh, be able to. We'll also learn like uh, what are the factors that are still lagging behind for the slow pace of like slow progress of education on women's. So next slide. So uh, here's the main claim that I have made is like, um, so main claim uh, of the paper is that uh, though there are various public organization, NGOs and INGOs working for women education and empowerment, the effort made by such agencies are not just enough and government along with such organizations should have proper strategies, laws and enforcement uh, and laws implement uh, to have an effectively to have to run to to maintain an effective uh, order to create an impact on women's education so the main claim would be that uh, role of uh, government and ngos should have uh, proper strategies and enforcement and implemented to uh, maintain an uh, to main, to have uh, to create an impact on women's education in nepal so the significance of this study is to, uh, to find out the roles and limitation of government and NGOs and women education, um, and also to, uh, to find out uh, the possibility sector where uh, the government and uh, NGOs are, uh, and a government can work to uplift the women's education system. 
So for the methodology, methodology part, I have used the secondary sources, uh, collecting some of the qualitative and quantitative data. So, um, so here on the next slide. So, okay, so I have picked three of the literature review in my paper. One is Educational Participation of Girls in Nepal, uh, which is an ethnographic study of girls education in rural, uh, rural village written by Timal Sina Georgi. And in this article, this article is actually a qualitative data. This actually, this uh, article presents a qualitative data, which says that 49% of women in Nepal are uh, still uh, illiterate uh, and um, uh, illiterate. But uh, the main uh, theme is that uh, the main, um, like the main study findings of this paper is that uh, it says that the girls, uh, the girls studying uh, in schools have less participation than that of male because of the factors like ethnic groups, uh, which is um, ethnic groups and minorities. For example, let's say Dalit uh, and other uh, minor communities are basically discriminated and treated uh, like uh, not equally by which they don't get motivated to go to school and their participation is very low. And um, uh, due to the low caste dis uh, disproportionately increasing uh, discrimination towards girls compared to boys, that's why the girls couldn't uh, go to school. And uh, uh, so uh, the main, uh, uh, so after that, uh, like the government in here can effectively work by making a strengthening its policy and uh, strengthening its law. Since there is a law for uh, minorities that uh, laws under human rights that uh, everyone should be treated equally. So uh, government and uh, agencies, government should uh, enforce the law uh, regarding the people's right and uh, minorities right. So uh, in the other, um, you know, in the other literature, girls child marriage prevalence government can enforce the strict law and maintain the peace in the country by Sam Thapa. It is also a qualitative uh, plus quantitative data which uh, reflects the various um, data regarding the cases of early marriage. Um, early marriages in Nepal. So uh, initially the early marriage cases were very high, uh, very high where uh, the children used to get married at the age of four to six. But since the establishment of, uh, since the establishment of child marriage law, uh, so it now it is uh, marrying, uh, marrying before 20 is illegal now. So, but uh, however, there are 37% of girls in Nepal who marry before 18 and 10% uh, of marriage, 10% uh, marry by the age of 15, which is, uh, which, uh, is illegal. Um, so uh, the main uh, focus here is that uh, the children who marries uh, early, uh, like both uh, early, um, get less chance to go for the school. And uh, the girls usually suffers from the, since the girls uh, have to get married early, they get, uh, they get deprived of deprived deprived of education, health facilities, along with the domestic violences uh, and uh, the other social is issues. So the next article is about the role of governmental organizations in the improvement of livelihood in Nepal. And so this. Oh, sorry, <laughs> non-government, <laughs> non-governmental organization in the improvement of livelihood in Nepal. So this uh, article is a qualitative data focused, uh, which uh, focus on uh, which um, focuses on the limitations of non-governmental organizations, like why they are lagging behind. So the, uh, so some of the um, things are like demand led uh, demand led initiatives, for example. Uh, Non-governmental organizations are always dependent. They have a dependency syndrome on uh, the uh, international agencies and foreign grants and supports. So if they lack with the supports, uh, then um, they uh, they have to you know alter their plan. The plan they have initiated have to alter. And since they don't have a, a they don't have a sustainable uh, like they lack with the uh, long term long term services because uh, since they are dependent with the donor so um, long term and, and they uh, they have uh, they are uncertain about long term sustainability so a uh, diversification uh, so they have to diverse their activities as per their source and fund collected by foreign services 
so uh, this is the thing so uh, and also uh, girls and uh, they and they also lack in policy making um, policy making activities when it comes about governmental uh, governmental collaboration they their policy commitment is uh, they lack with the policy commitment as they are not equal, they are not properly involved in the governmental uh, collaboration sector so these are the literature review so uh, where we focus that uh, how like uh, if the government is strengthening the law then uh, the girls education could be uh, improved and uh, so these are when such issues arise in the country or in a society then the role of government is very uh, like crucial the government can play a very crucial role in enhancing girls education by enforcing the law by implementing and formulating the new laws if needed so in the other uh, last article uh, which says that only the role of uh, non-governmental organization is not enough because of the limitations it has that's why the government has to be very proactive and uh, work effectively uh, depending less on the ngos and uh, internal international supports okay so uh, okay so in the conclusion part here i have mentioned that governmental approach is uh, the uh, governmental approach is very needed and uh, the policy uh, and they have to formulate the new policy and uh, for organizational part, I have said that one organization can't be active at all levels. Like if the education government, uh, if any organization is providing educational support, then there's no uncertainty that it will provide for the long term because uh, it is self, uh, it is itself dependent on the others, uh, others uh, international uh, agencies and. Um, last, uh, like my personal conclusion is that if the government and. NGOs uh, come together and collab, uh, then the, the joint effort could make and create an impact. Uh, so um, this is it, Professor. Thank you okay. so much. Very good. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. This is, these are the references uh, I have uh, added. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Very good. Um, okay. <coughs> uh, okay. Um, who else needs to go? Who hasn't gone yet? Um, <laughs> Let's see. Uh, uh, Mahira, Treen, and Fayasa, is that right? Yes, Professor, I'm here. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I did last class. But I couldn't able to share the screens as well. Uh, shall I go it now? Like, no, um, actually, Mahira was saying so, and then Fayasa, and then Tree. No, ma'am. I said that I presented in the last class. Oh, that's right. Okay, yes, Fayasa, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Mayra, and thank you, Professor. Hello, everyone. I'm Fayasa Marikar, and I'm from Sri Lanka. And I have to talk about uh, the women issue in Sri Lanka. It's uh, they are facing some problem, like many problem in their personal law reforms. Uh, in their personal law, uh, they are like facing the lack of uh, the child marriage. So uh, I, I, there are many cases are there. So I have to notice some, uh, somehow about the, the lack of minimum age of marriage. So they are uh, advocating uh, for that because uh, nowadays the uh, MMD, MMD means Muslim uh, Marriage Divorce Act. So the reforms are going on. Uh, for that, in my um, claim is uh, in keeping with uh, the national minimum age of marriage for all other Sri Lankan communities, addressing the uh, lived relatives of Muslim girls and Islamic value of the protecting uh, education and learning and state of, of being uh, to protect the best intent of children. So because uh, I have to talk about this uh, because uh, the scenes there, it is going so much like more aggressive uh, topic in Sri Lanka. Uh, so in many of the NGOs, so I just uh, work with them. Then uh, I was the part of uh, one of NGOs. So I have to address that uh, as a problem, the women issues. So in the many of the NGOs, the conditionally minimum of age uh, for Muslim in Sri Lanka will continue to damage Muslim children. The same uh, protection to give the other non-Muslim children because uh, other uh, personal laws, uh, they are giving the uh, minimum age as 18, but in Sri Lanka, the Muslim uh, law, they are not giving the age as 18. 
so in creates a legal uh, loophole the through which muslim children especially girls are likely to be then a uh, opportunity to complete education and contribute uh, at their higher capacity in society and family and community life so i have some data regarding the child marriage um, in the year of 2014 and 16 there were total uh, 5440 sorry 5491 marriage register in which the bride was uh, between 12 and 18 years representing uh, 90% of total number of muslim registered marriage uh, therefore the issues uh, of under marriaging within the muslim community is significant of uh, consideration by the reform process um, the fact that majority of the under marriage taking the place in the muslim community are with the girls aged 16 to 70 means uh, that is the age group uh, which requires the uh, protection of the law and not an exemption uh, of it so this is also the age group uh, whose secondary education will be uh, affected because uh, in sri lanka that is the age for the secondary uh, education as the case studies like uh, below indicated many girls who are married uh, at 16 and 17 Do not complete their OELs or, or ordinary levels or advanced levels exams, um, effectively preventing the uh, pursuit of the future studies and limiting opportunities for employment. So here is um, I have there is many things uh, I have to explain, but I don't have the much time to explain. I have implemented in my uh, research paper, so I will give uh, some. Uh, there are uh, three case studies i have so i will mention one so you you guys can get more uh, what are the issues you can like the transmissional belief uh, greater the from the field research so that uh, strong between early marriage and increase the uh, uh, vulnerability or uh, to domestic violence and discontinuing the studies and harassment in quasi court uh, okay quasi court mean uh, that is the a uh, muslim personal uh, marriage and divorce act law so we have the separate court for that that is called the quasi court mm, the names of the interests like has been the change in the transmissional belief uh, so below the protection identify as the uh, fear the uh, obstruction relation and relations uh, content has been the like, uh, this so i have the some case study so i will read like them okay so the first case study of latifa stories after i complete my oil exam i wanted to continue studying but my parents insisted that i get married i was 16 when i married and my husband was 28 before our marriage i had had that he had other girl friend but when question he denied this relationship after our marriage he would abuse me vulnerably same and demand uh, me his family he was also sexually abused and i developed health problem as a result it turned out that he had many affairs with others sometimes married women unable to cope with him i feel for divorce but it was difficult for me to explain to the male quasi my problems and the divorce pro divorce pro proceed proceeding structured on i am divorced now i i have started studying again i feel an education can help me and with Uh, wish that uh, other girls too will be allowed to study and not complete to marry so young in this case professor like we can see the quasi is the male so she can't explain what is happening in her personal life because uh, uh, in quasi court the female can uh, cannot be a quasi uh, the male only can be a quasi so quasi mean it's judge so she can't explain during that problem and and also she is like uh, some of the ngos help to her to continue her studies so she uh, 
she is sexually abused by her husband so uh, so these are the some cases so in um, shall i continue so i actually, have a time actually uh just one minute because we have to go to uh trin okay so uh, i will explain my uh, research paper about the case study profile so i will uh, conclude this session slide so uh, so what are the demands and issues uh, the most of the women are like the advocating like ensure that the mmda reflect the application of the state uh, stipulated uh, age of 18 years as a minimum age of marriage for without exception so remove from the mmda all prevention and in inference that uh, refer to children over or below 12 years of age being eligible to marry age of marriage cannot be decided uh, arbitrarily and by the uh, unappre unprevating committees group individuals so date of birth uh, of uh, bride and groom has be mandatory to record uh, in the marriage registration form because in sri lanka we don't have the marriage uh, and the date of birth for the uh, groom and marriage, uh, bride so Okay. if this appear here so they they can assume right or they can like tell uh, she is uh, under age so she can marry so okay. that's my thank okay you. thank you i almost broke your law i got married and i was 20 which is really a bad idea don't you do that okay uh all right uh treen go ahead that was very good <laughs> Sir, so sorry. Okay. Well, is there anybody else? Or is Trina the last one? And she. Oh, go ahead. I already have my short presentation, so what should I do now? Oh, oh, you already gave yours. <laughs> oh, yes, you did. Okay, sorry. Does everybody has everybody given their presentation? Um, all right, so I'm really sorry. I apologize for being rude. We actually have three minutes left, uh, and I don't like interrupting people. Um, but here's what I want you to to get, like the wrap up from this, because I do want you to write. Uh, you have two more papers in this class. Um, in another month or so, three weeks. uh you can write a non research paper and it's just about which of the goddesses you identify with the most right so we will finish all the goddesses we still haven't done hera or persephone or hestia or um uh i don't know they at least three left and when we get to the end of that then you you write your paper on just your subjective experience right so you can talk about your background how it fits in with the path of one of these goddesses or some mix and then you also have to say i i want a career in this which means i'm going to have to become more like artemis or i so i had a student who's rather hestia like she's contemplative but she wants to be in environmental stuff so she's saying i'm going to have to learn how to be more like athena or artemis anyway that's your next paper and then your final paper i want you to have another research paper like this one and i would like you to have a powerpoint like uh roshani had and i want you to learn from what we've done the last couple days if you can understand what i mean by your particular paper is going to focus on something specific and like the the legal association and then specifically what it's done it has 65 branches it has this and it has taken x number of cases for the last 5 years or something or and or these results like metadata the research shows not only that women's education is important everybody knows that but that how do you get women to actually develop it so research shows that if you provide food in a village and you bring people to a central location 
for uh, food, you can also uh, talk about education. I don't know, something like that, where there's something specific that we're making this history, we're carving out a new space, we've done the research, we've made educated decisions, and the evidence is that this new branch or this new method is going to work, or the government has started working with the NGOs, or the uh, NGO has started working, or the United Nations has started working with the government or whatever. So that's what I want you to, to uh, do for your final. You can start thinking about it now, but it's just gonna be very similar to this one, but you're gonna be better. It's gonna be better because you have practice and it needs a PowerPoint and you all, you're all gonna do a beautiful job. I just know it, I can feel it in my bones, okay? So um, I will see you, you have a good break, all right? I won't see you for a, for a long time, Wah, but you have fun now, okay? <laughs> and um, I will yeah, still have, I will still have office hours, but there might be days when I start them a little later. I, I might hang out with my friends in the evening or something. But um, I, if you want an office hour for sure on a specific day, email me. Otherwise, I might cancel to go to a concert or something, okay? Okay, okay, professor. Yes, professor. Have a nice day, professor. Yeah, you have a nice. Thank you, professor. Yeah. Have a nice course. weekend, professor. Yeah. Have, a nice you professor. Week. You have a nice break, you guys. Just find a way to relax. I don't know how you did it. Professor, professor, did you take my <laughs> Yeah. I'll join that at village. <laughs> yeah, no, I took that. Your, Thank you, that professor. Of, yep. Yep. Professor, did you take my attendance? Yes, oh yes, I did. I've got everybody's here except uh, Janifa, Jacinta, and Nisali. Oh, okay, thank okay. you. Okay, sure, I should, I could say that just to make sure everybody knows I got them. Thank you, Professor, see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that the class tomorrow? Yeah, bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, Professor. You Bye. will be missed during the break. <laughs> well, you just relax. Find some way. I don't know how you can. But, but Professor, I am here inside the campus, and we are in quarantine. We can't do anything. We can't go outside. And... Does anybody have COVID, though? No. No good. one does. That's good, because, I mean, you know, you do have people coming in from the outside, right? To yeah. See, yeah, and so, I mean, there's still the possibility. And if that happens, it's going to be really hard for you, right? The, the problem, the thing that wonders me is that the staff go outside anywhere they want. They enjoy, like they go to mosque, pray, they go to bazaar, they go to shopping. But the students are not allowed, even if we need something so necessary. So right. this, I, I'm wondering that if the staff go outside and they, they bring... Who, who is allowed? Who is the workers? Like those who work in IT, those who work uh, like in finance. Those staff, who work the in staff. Visa. Yeah, staff. What about the faculty? Faculty are not here. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Okay, so it's the staff. All right, um... I guess I will actually, I'll contact my boss about that. Um, yeah, because the staff, you say the staff, they go home every night? Yeah, they go home and they come in the morning, but we cannot go. I mean, okay. I mean, I wish, <laughs> I wish they have some mercy on us, at least let us to go just maybe after three weeks once to shop something our, we need. Well, I think mostly it just shouldn't be a double standard. Um, yeah. That's, I don't know. 